I want to thank you for watching this short video about this matter of eternal life. The Bible, God's Word, tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, These things have I written unto you, that believe in the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. God gave us the Bible, according to that verse, so that we can know for sure that we have eternal life. Eternal life simply is living forever with God in heaven. And God, in His Word, has outlined a simple plan whereby we can know for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that we have eternal life. First, in order to have eternal life, we must understand our condition before God. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, as it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. According to that verse, God tells us that there's nobody perfect before God. And the reason we're not perfect is because a few verses down in the same chapter, in verse 23, the Bible tells us, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all come from different backgrounds, different nationalities, different cultures. But irregardless, regardless of that, God tells us we all have one thing in common, that before God, we have all sinned. And I think if you're honest, along with me, we realize that we've not lived a perfect life. We all have done things probably we shouldn't have done, and uh, we are all sinners before God. And God says the first thing to know if we're going to go to heaven is the fact that in His eyes, we are all sinners. Secondly, the Bible tells us in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Sin has consequences. God says because of our sin, we must die. Death in the Bible is separation. If you remember the story of Adam and Eve, God created man and woman, placed them in the Garden of Eden. And he set some restrictions on Adam and Eve. He told them, you can have all the tree except for one. But Adam and Eve sinned and disobeyed God. God told them that on the day they sinned, they shall surely die. Now, God meant physical death because years later they did die. But what he meant chiefly is the fact that they will be separated from God. Because on that very day, God cast them out of his presence from the Garden of Eden. And ever since that time, God and man have been separated. But the sad part about that death is the eternal death God talks about. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, the Bible tells us, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The sad part about separation from God is where we spend it. God tells us that our eternal separation from God is in what the Bible calls the lake of fire. And that is the bad news. So in order for us to get eternal life, God wants us to understand a few things. First of all, he wants to understand that in His sight, there's nobody perfect. There's nobody righteous. And the reason we're not righteous is because we are all sinners before God. Secondly, God wants us to understand that the penalty, the wages, the consequences of sin is eternal separation from God in a place called hell. Now, nobody likes to talk about hell, and rightfully so. It's not a very nice place. It's not a very nice place to ponder, to think about. But nonetheless, hell is real. And that's the bad news. But every time you have bad news, there's always good news. In fact, in the same verse that I quoted in Romans 6.23, the second part actually tells us the good news. The bad news is the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God doesn't want us to go to hell, so God made a way. And that way was to send His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, God became man, and Jesus Christ on the cross suffered and died for our sins. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God commended, or God proved His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When Jesus died on the cross, He did not die because He was a sinner. Jesus died because He had our sin on Him. And he was punished for us. Jesus suffered what we would suffer in hell. And Jesus died, of course. He was buried and rose again. But here's what I want us to think about in that verse. The Bible says the gift of God is eternal life. Notice that 
verse, it says, the gift of God. Let me illustrate it by way of uh, example right here. Let's say it's your birthday today. And normally in birthdays you get gifts. And so let's pretend I'm going to give you a gift. So it's your birthday. I'm going to give you a gift. Let's say that this pen will be the gift. I say, happy birthday. I want to give you this gift if you give me $5 in return. That's not a gift, is it? Because there's a condition. You gotta give me five dollars. So forget about the five dollars. I say, you know what? I'll give you this gift if you do some projects around the house that I've been meaning to do. If you complete those projects, I'll give you that gift. Well, that's not a gift because there's still a condition. Let's say another condition. Let's say I'll give you this gift if you go to church on Sundays, you read your Bible, you pray, and do good to neighbors. Then I'll give you that gift. You know, that's still not a gift because there's still a condition. Every time I say, I'll give you this if, then that's the condition. A gift has no condition. A gift is free. And uh, God paid the price for our sins on Calvary. That's why Jesus Christ can offer us the gift because he has already paid the price for us. You see, eternal life is that my, by means of our good works. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 89, the Bible tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. And then it says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. Can you just imagine people in heaven uh, making it there because of their good works? You know what's going to happen? We're going to have all eternity bragging on what we did. But God says nobody's going to be bragging on their works in heaven. What we're going to be doing is worshiping Jesus Christ and thanking him forever because it's only through him that we are there. So let's review real quick. God says if you want to have eternal life, you must understand that in the sight of God, there's nobody perfect. We are all sinners. Regardless of our nationalities, our background, our culture, we all have one thing in common. That is before God, we are sinners. And secondly, we must understand that the consequence for our sin is eternal separation from God in a place called the lake of fire. But God loves us so much, he doesn't want us to go there. In fact, John 3, 16, very familiar verse uh, to many people. God tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves us so much, he sent his son, Jesus Christ to die in our place so that you and I can go to heaven when we die. Jesus was buried. The Bible tells us after three days, he rose again. When Jesus rose from the grave, he is now freely able to give us eternal life. Why? He paid for it. He can now give us forgiveness because he has already taken our punishment on the cross. The, the way to accept that forgiveness is very simple actually. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God says whosoever. That means it, anybody can have it. That means you can have it. Anybody who wants eternal life can have it. The Bible says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall. He didn't say may. He said shall be saved. It's guaranteed. If you in your heart and simple faith would just believe that only Jesus Christ can take you to heaven. God says you shall be saved. You will have eternal life because there's no other way for us to go to heaven. John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. It's not my good works, it's not my religion, I'm a Baptist preacher. I got baptized in this church. Those are good things, but those will never ever get me to heaven. Not on my works, the Bible says. It's only through the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. There is only one Savior. It's not in a church. It's not in a religion. It's not in a ritual. It's only Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And God wants you to be saved. And God wants you to go to heaven when you die. But you're not going to go to heaven if you refuse the gift of God. You see, what I didn't mention a while ago is that if I offer the gift to you, you still have a choice. 
You can either accept the gift or refuse the gift or reject the gift. But whether the gift is yours or not is entirely up to you. And the same thing with eternal life. God, Jesus Christ, has already paid the price for our sins. And God says, if you'll just trust me as your Savior, nothing else, not your good works, your religion, or anything else, and ask me to give you eternal life and be your Savior, Jesus says, I will save you. And it's as simple as asking him, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we're all sinners. Because we're sinners, we deserve to die and go to hell. God doesn't want us to die and go to hell. He sent his son, Jesus Christ. And God the Son died on the cross for your sins and mine. He was buried, rose again. And God now wants to give you eternal life. If you would simply by faith put your faith in Jesus Christ and ask him to take you to heaven. Here's what I want you to do. If you want to ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I'll lead you in a simple prayer. Now, keep in mind, the prayer will not save you. You can pray all the prayers you want to, but unless you mean it in your heart, Jesus will not save you. But the prayer is an expression of what's in the heart. And in this prayer, this is what we'll pray in a little bit. We're going to tell Jesus that we understand that we're sinners. And because we're sinners, we deserve to die and go to hell. But we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And at this very moment, we're trusting him and only Him to take us to heaven. If you mean that prayer, I want you to pray that with me right now. Why don't you bow your head and pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I deserve to go to hell, but I believe you died for me. Please save me, give me eternal life, and take me to heaven when I die. I trust you, Jesus, and only you, not my good works, not my religion, but only you to take me to heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me and paying for my sins. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and meant it in your heart, all you need to do now is just claim God's promise. God says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. God says if you in simple faith ask Jesus to be your savior, God because he is a God that cannot lie gave you eternal life. So whatever day this is today you can always say on such and such a day I ask Jesus Christ to be my savior and on such and such a day God gave me eternal life because I trusted his son Jesus Christ to be my savior. 